All right. So Ron and uh Ron and BJ are in their room. Is that right, guys? Go ahead, Ron, BJ, Will. Yeah, Ron and BJ first. So uh, Andy, uh, no second half of all the day. I mean, what did you see out of your guys after halftime? They committed uh, not only for, from the players, but the coaches. They committed to the run game. Um, took our shots on, on the defense um, offensively when we got our opportunities. Uh, you know, we started off a little bit slow, um, but the uh, the guys never wavered today. I mean, they they knew exactly what what we needed to do and how we were going to do it. And um, you know, they were excited coming out at halftime. It's the way they practiced for the last two weeks. Uh, the way they finished the game, the way the offense finished the game is the way we've practiced for the last two weeks. And we did it for one week, and now we got to get back to work after tonight, and we got to get ready to do it again. Defensively, I mean, you've done it at times this year, but you did the game where you gave up some yards. But once you got down there in the red zone, you held the field goals. And three times they were inside the five and had to go to field goals. And that ends up being, you know, nine-point win, the difference in the game. How big was the defense holding you tight down there? Yeah, it's always your backs against the wall down there. We want to limit those situations on a few of those. We could have got ourselves off the field on third downs. Um, had to make some adjustments there in the middle of the second quarter and going into halftime to be able to, uh, you know, take away 85 on the drop back pass stuff, but then handle the quarterback on the run, on you know, on the scrambles and, and him um, extending plays with his legs. And I thought the uh, defensive staff did a really good job with that and the players. And, and uh, we did a much better job. Um, in the second half on third downs, and that showed, and we weren't in the red zone as much. Andy, the ability to, to just weather the storm, how important was that tonight? Yeah, I mean, typically we talk about just weathering the storm on the first drive on the openers, you know, from, from the other team's offense. Well, you know, because all week, you know, uh, an offense is going to practice those plays, and you're usually going to get some different looks in there, and you're going to get some uh, specialties in there, and usually we're talking about just weathering it on the first drive, but yeah, we weathered it a little bit too long in the first quarter there, but um, responded And it. You know, we talk about being three or nothing in the red zone and, and the guys uh, really did a good job down there battling. And it was it was good to see, you know, and um, a lot of that stuff came through the air and, and um, you know, some pocket movement passes that um, we got to do a better job of with our eye control because we're going to continue to see that stuff. We're going to see that stuff next week as well. Um, but the guys did a really good job at the line of scrimmage, you know, and that's what was a big part in the red zone, too, is they couldn't run the ball down there. Was George on a snap count tonight? And when he was in the game, what did you see out of him? Yeah, he was on a snap count, and, uh, I mean, he's explosive. And it was good to see him back out there. That's what that's what was a huge benefit is being able to have him and Cyrus and mix in the other backs. And um, uh, the O-line did an unbelievable job. Um, the, the, the coaches did a great job putting together a game plan that uh, felt like would expose some things in their defensive front that is really good. And they've limited a lot of people to uh, minimal rushing yards all year. You did two 97-yard drives. I don't know how many times that's happened in the game for the same team. But to, to do that not once but twice and have, you know, string together some third down pickups, even a fourth down pickup on that one. How, how big was the, those two drives in particular? The second one gave you the lead. The consistency and the confidence that you can gain from moving that far down the field. We had um, later in the drive a couple longer pass plays, but for the most part, I mean, we we're chunking away. And the consistency to execute. Um, and I'm honestly, uh, I mean, there were some really good play calls, you know, put into that stuff. And and keep the coordinator keeping the offense in rhythm was was a big part. Quarterbacks executing. And then later in the game, too, the quarterbacks executing the four-minute drill for almost all of the fourth quarter and taking the chunk of that clock off was huge. You guys were down 16 to 7 at halftime. What was your message to the guys in the locker room? You know what? It wasn't – there was there was no panic. There was no worry. There was none at all. Um, you know, it was partly so in doing – we, we could have been better, obviously. We, we got off to a slow start. There was a drive that got uh, stalled out by a call. Um by the refs and um, we were moving along on that drive as well and I think that drive right there gave the guys confidence and in, in which led into that um, you know that first long 97 yard drive and I think even though that that first drive didn't go well that stalled out it gave the guys a confidence. I know saying it's a season saving win might be a little too dramatic but I mean it's, yeah it it's is obviously a, obviously a big win and all the wins are big now I mean, how do you put in perspective what this does to keep your division hopes alive bowl game hopes alive all that? Yeah, it's just, you know, every week we're trying to be one and oh, each and every day. And that's what we did this week. And, you know, it was our best. And, uh, 
you know, overall is our best performance, you know, um, and we grew as a team and, and the guys had fun working hard and getting after it. And that's what um, that's what we're going to celebrate. And we're going to continue to work to build off of that. Into your perspective, what was the most impressive thing Shaq did? Oh, man. I don't know. Someone's just asking me if he's going to fly the plane home tonight, too. I don't if he's not too tired, he might be able to. But I mean, that's him. He. Uh, you know, lining up in the backfield and in, you know, playing tailback, the route, um, the situations he was set up in it as a wide receiver to go win. There's some tight coverage on him and he made some unbelievable plays. A lot of guys did. How about Ty Neal? How about the ball that, um, you know, uh, Hank put on Ty Neal and how he finished that? That was unbelievable as well. That was a huge, huge play. But but Shaq did it every which way. And I think that's important that Shaq's um, – not only his touches, but there's other guys on the team too. We got to be aware of of how many touches certain guys are getting in in this, especially in the run game. We were there was a a number, and we won't talk about that number, but there was a certain number we were going to hit in terms of rushes today, no matter what. And if it was, you know, ten or twelve of those were only for two or three yards, that was going to be fine. And we committed ourselves to doing that, like we had the last two weeks. I know it didn't matter because he won, but that he had a touchdown taken off the board because of the whistle there. What, what, it looked like the whistle on the replay was like four seconds after the snap. What did what, you see there? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what happened. The referee apologized. And I can't comment on what I think or whatever, but that's exactly what happened, BJ. Um, he blew the whistle when the player had already caught the ball. And I was very confused about what happened there. And, uh, you know, those – things you can't do in the, you know, about some of those situations, but I was very confused about what happened and how late that whistle got blown. The play was already over. I thought they were blowing it for the play being over. That's how late it was. You said you just, you just called, called for uh, targeting for at least third time this season. How do you coach that out of a guy without affecting the instinct, but it's so important for the defensive player? Right. We got to work on uh, putting our shoulder pad in, in. It's, it's hard. It's hard for him because he is so tall. And in these instances, we've seen this happen. The ball carrier is low, going down, and or lowering his pad level. And when you're 6'4", and you're working to create leverage to get some knockback on a positive angle tackle, it is very difficult. Um, he didn't lower it to the crown of his helmet. We've been making sure that we're eyes up working to strike with our shoulder pads. we got to do a better job of that. He's an explosive player. Um, you know, obviously we've been put, you know, he's he's uh, had too many of these situations, so we just got to keep working it. But we're not going to take his aggressiveness and his mentality away. There's no way. There is no way. The way he flew him down through that alley and let that guy have it, hey, we'll keep working it and making sure that he's delivering that blow with his shoulder. Jay, when Jay, when you get Jay? your shot, yeah, I'll is. take it whenever. <laughs> uh, Andy, we know how hard you guys work through your bye week. Uh, do you feel like you found something that that you guys can sustain over the course of the rest of the season in terms of your preparation? And after the BYU game, you said ex how excited you were for your boys to to feel, you know, what it, what it's like to win a big game. Uh, what was the locker room like after this one? Yeah, very much so. We celebrated, but. Jay, we, we also talked about some other things, too, that we've done after winning and how we responded. And we ain't going to wait to see. We set the standard for what this is going to look like when we get back to work. We're going to enjoy this tonight, and we're going to get right back to work. And, you know, we um, – I don't know. Someone was telling me it's the 13th hardest schedule, you know, in the nation. And I laughed. <laughs> Feels a lot harder, you know, that it's higher than that sometimes. But – that's the beauty and what we get to do. And what that requires of us is to be our best every single day, you know, in our preparation. And, and they deserved it tonight, man. They deserved uh, the success they had individually, but more importantly, collectively as a team. Uh, when we needed a huge special teams play there at the end of the game, we got that. Um, you know, we had some, some uh, good returns. Shaq had, you know, a big return. And, um, you know, all three phases stepped up. When, uh, well, you know, I, I think that uh, – sorry to second.
clarification there. Um, when, when we talk about, you know, what's happened so far this season, a lot of times you, you say that it comes down to the little things and maybe they've stacked up against you in prior games, but tonight they work so effectively in your favor. In the second half in particular on offense and defense, uh, you were ahead of the chains on offense and on defense. It seems like you were able to keep them behind the chains. Um, how, how effective was that into the, the results you saw tonight? Yeah, it's been something that we've been stressing hard. You know, on, on offense, it comes down to obviously being able to run the ball. And that opens up so much more on first down. And that team was heavy, heavy pressure to start the game, you know, on first down because of some of the things that we've done in the past. And so to be able to do what we did tonight, both on both sides of the ball. And you know what? We didn't we didn't do a great job. I think would we start three and out, you know, the first couple of series there. Um, we did not do a great job that way and even in the locker room at halftime like no nobody wavered on what it was we knew that it was us that was to fix the things that we needed to do to to be out in front of the chains and and that was a big part of it we weren't going to press we weren't going to try to do anything we we're going to stick to the plan and execute it better and win our one-on-ones and that's what the guys did in the second half jeff Andy, appreciate Andy, it to Rachel. thanks jay so I have to credit uh, your sports information stats, our staff for this stat, but uh, Tynell Hopper's 51-yard catch was the longest touchdown catch by a tight end since 2001, which wow. was Jeb Putzier, who you obviously must have crossed paths with at some point. So, you know, how much more uh, exciting and impactful does that make his touchdown tonight? If, if I mean, if you knew Ty Neal and you saw how humble – Ty Neal is every single day and how he works. And I mean, Ty, Ty Neal, the majority of the time, I mean, I'm sure all you guys pay attention. He goes in when what happens? When, when what happens, Ron? He blocks. He blocks. And I think that's why that's on, on top of scoring a touchdown. Like, that's why everybody's so happy for him. You know, the team not only put points on the board, but who did it and what he does day in and day out. Like, that's. That's what our team needs, guys that are selfless, that, that do the work that it takes to be successful, and, you know, they get rewarded in that way. And Hank, again, Hank put it on him. There was – I mean, he put it right where he needed to, and Ty Neal finished. Uh, another guy that kind of maybe didn't get enough credit tonight, uh, the TV said the whole time that that blocked punt went to uh, Riley Smith. So Brandon Hawkins tonight getting that. And uh, <laughs> teammate hot. Jones didn't even know that he thought it was Kakala that, that blocked it. So tell us a little bit about Brandon's, Brandon's block tonight. Well, last year uh, we got two off the edge. Boise State blocked two punts off the edge. And, and their, um, their shield saw Kakala coming off the edge and he – way overcorrected outside and it opened up right for B Hawk, the other number three to be able to block that. And, you know, coach Collins all week said, listen, listen, they're going to overreact. And, and he kept telling B Hawk that uh, expect to come free and college just started laughing and shaking his head right away because it happened. Coach, sorry if you touched on this earlier. Thanks for the time. Congrats on the win. You guys come into the game and get one to get clear a, a certain number of touches. I think he had 16 touches tonight. Yeah, and there's uh, obviously various ways that we were going to get that done tonight on top of special teams because that goes into it as well. Um, and I think that's important. It is extremely important that he touches the ball a certain amount of times as well as each one of the running backs. Um, and, uh, you know, there's other wide receivers too that we have certain target points with, you know, within the game plan. Uh, so that every, you know, defense has got to respect all those guys because there's, you know, there's multiple guys that are capable. You know, Steph, Steph got a lot of the same looks that, um, that Shaq got too. So being able to spread that wealth around, I think I looked at the stats real quick, but the receptions, what did what, what we have there? Nine for 118 for Shaq, but the rest of the guys too were – you know, for, yeah, I mean, Octavius. So Octavius got some of that too. He had a carry. Octavius scored a touchdown on, on a reverse, scored a touchdown, and just missed him on a long pass at the end of the game there that would have had his receiving yards. So, you know, you see those those top guys right there that have been consistent with what they're doing week in and week out. And them, them being, you know, as much as it is, is getting a play called in from the sideline is those three guys, how they're in sync with Hank. At the end of the day, quarterback's got to trust them to be where they're at when they're supposed to be there, and they've done a good job with that. Okay. Thanks.
Thank you, guys. Thanks, Craig. Recording stopped.